హలో ఎవ్రీవాన్ వెల్కమ్ బ్యాక్ టు వెంకన్న ఇంగ్లీష్ గురు ఫ్రెండ్స్ ఐ కుడ్ నాట్ టేక్ అప్ ద క్లాస్ ఫర్ మోర్ దెన్ టెన్ డేస్ విత్ రిగార్డ్ టు అవర్ క్లాసెస్ యాజ్ ఐ వాజ్ సో లెటిల్ బిట్ బిజీ ఇన్ మై కాలేజ్ వర్క్ సో టుడే వీఆర్ గోయింగ్ టు టాక్ టాక్ అబౌట్ ద వెరీ వండర్ఫుల్ టాపిక్ దట్ ఈస్ ఆల్రెడీ వీ డిస్కస్డ్ టీఎస్ ఎలియట్ లెటిల్ బి ఇంట్రడక్షన్ ఇన్ మై ప్రీవియస్ వీడియో విత్ రిగార్డ్ టు లిటరేచర్ బైస్ టీఎస్ ఎలియట్ యాజ్ ఎ క్రిటిక్ వాట్ ఆర్ ద సమ్ క్రిటికల్ కాన్సెప్ట్స్ ఆఫ్ టీఎస్ ఎలియట్ వేర్ వీ హ్యాడ్ వన్ class about T.S. Eliot. Friends, in this video, I am going to talk about T.S. Eliot and his criticism. T.S. Eliot and his critical thoughts, his critical arguments. This is what we are going to talk in this video. Because once you understand the concept of criticism from the perspective of T.S. Eliot, then you can read and his works and different works in a different way. Because the more you understand the mind of T.S. Eliot, the better you read the text like The Wasteland or Modern the Cathedral. Because since you've been preparing for different examinations like UGC and EDSET and you want to be a lecturer, junior lecturer or degree lecturer, this could be very useful. So listen to me, my friends, T.S. Eliot and his criticism. And before we go into the topic, remember all the time, subscribe to our YouTube channels, Venkana English Guru, for more videos on uh, english literature for different examinations so this is a very popular statement my friends if you are writing junior lecturers if you are writing degree lecturers examination if you are writing and previously once you go through the previous question papers and there is a bit like poetry refers to not turning a loose of emotion but it's an escape from emotion a wonderful dialogue which is made by t.s eliot what does it mean by poetry according to t.s eliot if somebody asks you in an interview you can make the statement poetry means not turning one's loose of emotions it is an escape from emotion you have certain difficulty for example see for example i'll give you one practical example whenever i feel lonely whenever i feel that i don't have certain confidence certain inspiration then i come and to to the come in front of my students i speak to them because teaching or speaking to my students gives me a lot of strength that's what he says poetry means not uh, turning your loose emotions it is not going to be expressing for example see most of the romantic poets they expressed what they felt but according to t s eliot that is not the poetry and poetry which means it's an escape from emotion you have certain emotions maybe those are bad emotions so once you read the poetry of romantic poet romantic literature the poetry which is all about the what they felt and they wrote but according to the, according to this definition what you feel should not be the poetry and what you don't feel that should be the poetry should come out from emotion it should be poetry should be away from your emotions away from your personal experiences away from your and personal emotions it's a very wonderful dialogue made by t.s eliot remember this a sign for the vanished glory of the past and diagnosis of the spiritual distemper of the age these are the statements of criticism uh, on ts eliot's wasteland why wasteland is actually composed what made ts eliot to talk about this wonderful epic like that wasteland in 1922 so a sign of for the vanished glory the glory which the glory that he the spiritual glory that he visualized before the first world war which is vanished and through this vanished glory where and he wrote something that is the wasteland that he actually talks about next diagnosis of the spiritual dis- distemper diagnosis so it, it is just like the the moment you read the poem like the wasteland it indirectly talks about the spirit it indirectly gives you a lot of spiritual temper that is what he says so because according to t.s eliot there there was a spiritual degeneration degradation despair there was a despair there was no faith among the people about the traditional institutions religious institutions and moral institutions cultural institutions and as there was no spiritual to where people gave a lot of importance to and uh, me- mechanical world and the material world hence he says that this i wrote this in order to awake awaken the people to think of the concept of the lost spirituality very very important my friends remember next he was an assistant because he became a very wonderful critic only because of his 
background education like he was an assistant editor of the egoist this is very important yes it is associated with dash magazine so the egoist remember my friends egoist magazine from 1917 to 1919 which means the early poetry the early criticism the early essays of T.S. Eliot's were actually published in The Egoist. In 1920, he founded, started the influential quarterly, The Criterion, which is very important, which ended in 1939. So The Egoist, The Criterion. In 1922, The Wasteland appeared first in The Criterion. Very, very important. So The Wasteland is first actually published in The Criterion and then The Dial. So Criterion in London, in the European world, where it was actually and, pub and he actually published later the dial and where he published uh, the wasteland in America in the magazine the dial. And in 1925, he joined the London publishing fine Faberin and uh, Guire and was renamed Faberin Faber. So, so first you need to remember what are the magazines that, are, that he actually associated with. Egoist, Criterion, the dial, Faberin Faber. This is very important. Okay, friends, because with regard to your examination and uh, T.S. Eliot published his Wasteland first in and he was actually the first editor of and he actually continued this and T.S. Eliot actually published and his Wasteland in America in Dash magazine. These are all very, very popular examples, popularly uh, given uh, previous examination bits. Ambiguity, friends, you see, this is a ambiguity. This is actually a term associated with a popular writer we are talking about the concept like impersonality the theory of impersonality friends in my previous video i spoke about what are the literary techniques that were actually proposed by t.s Eliot in his life like we discussed uh, the importance of metaphysical poets importance of hamlet and his problems importance of traditional ind individual talent the concept of uh, objective correlative concept of uh, what you say dissolution of sensibility and now we talk. We are talking about impersonality. The concept of impersonality, which is actually coined by, used by, proposed by T.S. Eliot. And he made this to make comment on, to make a relationship with the concept of ambiguity. Ambiguity, this is actually coined by William Epson. And where he actually wrote a wonderful book, Seven Types of Ambiguity in 1935. And very actually, and this is actually William Epson, T.S. Eliot, I.A. Richards, Virginia Woolf, F.R. Lewis, all these are associated with uh, a concept like neo criticism. So the theory of impersonality is connected with uh, neo criticism. Remember, he coined this word to talk about some major and to make a, sim a similar kind of similarity between ambiguity. So, ambiguity, which is coined by William Epson, which means a form of reading. What is ambiguity? It's a form of reading. The way you read and the way you, you don't. Next, T.S. Eliot called new criticism the lemon squeezer school of criticism. Because I made a video based on, uh, based on new criticism in my previous videos. If you check, you just go through it. So here I'm making only one statement. New criticism, which is also called lemon squeezer criticism according to T.S. Eliot. So where? So... This new criticism where you will be able to read each and every every aspect of uh, a text or a novel or a drama. Next, T.S. Eliot's notion of impersonality put forward in his 1990. So this is actually coined in traditional individual talent, remember. So T.S. Eliot coined the term impersonality in the essay, traditional individual talent in 1990. Remember this examination oriented bit. What is this impersonality? It refers to an idea. There is a distinction between the author, author and the writer. There is a distinction between the writer and the author. That is what impersonality. So the concept of impersonality, which refers to there should be a distinction between the writer who writes the text and the reader who reads the text. Okay. Next, Eliot's view: the greater the separation between the two, the better. The more perfect of the artist, the more completely separate in him will be the man who suffers and the mind which creates. So that, so that's why there should be a separation between the writer and the author of the concept. That's what he says. So refers to an idea. There is a distinction between the author who is the person behind the work 
and the writer we saw to speak the person in the work so the writer who speaks in the work the writer who writes something and leaves it so here by this we can understand he makes a wonderful definition with regard to poetry poetry is not simply the conscious rendering of personal experience into words no poetry which which doesn't mean that talking about your personal like personal experiences into words no that's what he says next friends see our civilization comprehends a great variety and complexity and this variety and complexity and playing upon a refined sensibility must produce various and complex results the poet must become more and more comprehensive so the poet must become more and more comprehensive more allusive more indirect in order to force to dislocate if necessary language into his meaning so if you are a poet you must be and comprehensive in nature where you will you where you need to have comprehensive outlook so you need to provide a comprehensive outlook to the reader and allusive you need to give a lot of examples a lot of allusions a lot of similarities and in order to force in order to dislocate and language into me is meaning so your meaning should be given indirectly that's what he says this remark from eliot's essay the metaphysical poets gives one clue to his poetic method from proof from through the wasteland so the kind of poetry which is written by t.s eliot before the wasteland after wasteland which is entirely different you can understand not based on the language based on the meaning according to eliot next friends you can see from the philosopher poet and he was greatly influenced by french writers remember friends t.s eliot was greatly influenced by french writers like charles baudelaire arthur rimbaud paul verlaine most of the critics and who influenced t.s eliot were from french from the european world from the east eastern world from hinduism buddhism so he was greatly influenced by t a hulm and his friend ezra pound and he learned to fear what was seen as romantic so he was against the concept of romanticism and to regard the poetic medium rather than the poet's personality as an important factor to regard the poetic medium poetic medium which is not important and rather than the poet's personal to to regard the poet poetic medium rather than the poet's personality so here he gives a lot of importance to poetic medium which is very important how you convey your meaning are you are you able to convey your meaning through poetry or prose or drama not the personality of the poet what is very important medium is very important and how you say your message which is very important and what you say which is not required and you also because he received all these ideas from this t helm and ezra pound and hard and dry images were also advocated by t helm he uses very hard images dry images like uh, the relationship between different relations that he creates in the wasteland the hard and dry images because he wants to speak and remember this my friends all the time subscribe and share our information he want he wanted with allusiveness irony and he supported when you read the poetry of t.s eliot where you can find the concept of irony the concept of allusions references and once you read the wasteland where he uses more than 100 allusions where he uses different context different ideas from different texts wit he said the metaphysical poets how wit and passion could be combined so how to combine wit and passion very actually used in metaphysical poets he saw the friend symbolism that's what i've been talking about writers like charles baudelaire and the father of symbolism the originator of symbolism and stephen malam paul verlaine arthur rimbaud the popular symbolists and who influenced t.s eliot and he used a number of symbols the concept of symbolism in the poetry like the wasteland the hollow man ash wednesday murder in the cathedral and images could be both absolutely pre precise so that's what he says and the co combination of precision symbolic creation and ironic mockery in the poetry of the late 19th century french poet jules lafrog very 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 important so he learned he used the concept of co combination of precision symbolic creation so how to teach something through symbols this this and ironic mockery how to mock at us because the wasteland which is actually a mockery at the 
are traditional institutions, traditional religious institutions, traditional social institutions, traditional cultural institutions. It's a ironic mockery on the modern world. And because the entire the text, which is actually the best example for ironic mockery of the people, of the modern world, of the modern culture, of the modern religious institutions, cultural institutions. So how did he learn this technique of making ironic mockeries from the French writer and Jules Lafroc? And this, he was the person who coined the term free words. This is actually called words libre in French. Words libre, which means this is actually a term which is coined by the writer Jules Lafroc several times in the history of net, in the history of set, in different lecturers' examinations. There was a bit who coined the word, and Jules Lafroc is associated with words libre. What is the meaning of words libre? Free words. Who coined this word, Jules Lafroc? Who introduced it into, in, into modern English? T.S. Eliot. In which book? The Wasteland. Many, many bits, my friends. If you listen to me, you will find plenty of bits in my lecture. So, these three words, which means this definition also very important. Rhyming lines of irregular length with rhymes combining irregular places, which means a form of writing where no meter, no stanza form, no style is actually followed, where the writer uses different style. You also found the Jacobian dramatists such as Thomas Middleton and Cyril Toner and John Webster, the concept of using blank words with overtone colloquial movement. So these were the popular dramatists of 17th century who used blank words according to T.S. Eliot. Next friends, you can see, and Eliot wants to talk about the concept of criticism of T.S. Eliot and he learned fluency from and French and German. He was very fluent in German and German and, and French. His study of Western and non-Western literary and religious texts, original aspects. He read Bhagavad Gita, he read Sanskrit scripts because of his command over and his rigorous knowledge of the philosophy, his extracting critical intellects, his keen sensitivity to colloquial rhythm and idiomatic expressions that are commonly used by the Britishers, commonly used by the European world. And his ability to fuse anguished emotional states with sharply etched intellectual satire. So the concept of making intellectual satire based on and anger kind of emotions. And once you read his poetry and he, he and is known for all this. And Holmes protest against romantic concept of poetry. So actually, T.S. Eliot does not talk about any writer and before W.B. Yeats and after John Ryden. Remember, so he did not make any comment on the neoclassical, romantic and Victorian writers. From 1700 to 1900, where you don't find much criticism on romantic major poets and Victorian major poets and major writers of neoclassicism, sensibility or Augustus H. Because, and he thought that, and he followed the principle, principle of T.S. And T. E. Helm, romantic concepts. So, where he did not give any priority to this romanticism. Yet, for all his severity and, and poets such as P. B. Shelley, but he gave importance to P. B. Shelley and Walt Whitman. He adored, he praised the poetry and the revolutionary ideas of these two one British and the other, and American poet, American 19th century poet of American literature, and the popular poet of romantic poetry. And the symbolist influence on his imagery, elegiac lamentation over loss and fragmentation. So, for example, the wasteland, which is an example for an elegy. Next, friends, proof rock poems. And T.S. Eliot is known for the popular works like proof rock. Proof rock presents symbolic landscapes where the meaning emerges from the mutual interaction of the images. So proof rock, which means where you can understand, you can receive the meaning by understanding the images. Picture reading, for example. So where the readers, where the critics recognize the meaning of the text by looking at the pictures. And, uh, and uh, Hesoind and Dante and Shakespeare, where he actually followed. It is difficult to the modern reader who needs editorial assistance in recognizing, understand many of the allusions, the differences. I'll give you the short summary of the wasteland. 
and soon after soon after this lecture maybe my next video is going to be the short synopsis of ts eliot's so how you can understand i designed that by reading several times so next is searching for spiritual peace and this is also one of the major themes of ts eliot's literature critical works okay next friends you can see and eliot's early poetry was all about cultural decay so he wrote a lot of poetry at the beginning where he actually talks about cultural uh, decay modern western world ash wednesday it's a poem in six parts much less concentrated in style the earlier poetry explores with gentle insistence and mood both and penitential and questioning so ash wednesday which is all about the questioning the aerial poems aerial poems sphini poems prufrock poems all these are associated with the tsl let remember aerial prufrock sphini all poems called because aerial poems are so called because published in faber's aerial pamphlet as these poems were published in aerial pamphlet hence they are called aerial poems these talk about aspects of religious doubt discovery of revelation journey of the magi for example aspects of religious journey or discovery or revelation so you discover the importance of religion at one time or the other next you can see in four quarters four quarters which is actually uh, which is actually a part of four parts they will ask in the net examination and i made a quote bedel four quarters first part burnt northern second east cocker the dry salvages a little getting remember the order so and burnt northern east cocker the dry salvages little getting what is the first part what is the last part they will ask questions you must be careful composed in it's a combination of four poems and four interlinked meditations with the common theme being man's relationship with time so ash and this four quarters which is all about man's relationship with the time four poems talk about eliot's blends is anglo catholicism in mystical philosophical poetic works eastern and western where he actually used the concept of bhagavad gita pre socratics and uh, and the cross and julian of norwich these are the allusions references that were actually used in the text in the poem four quarters collection of poetry I remember my friends and uh, it this, the concept of dissociation of sensibility we discussed this concept you know next uh, and uh, he was greatly influenced by the concept of religion where he became anglo catholic in 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 london this also created a lot of a lot of impact on his writing the concept of anglo catholicism in religion okay next uh, cathedral our family reunion and family reunion once you talk about this is actually this is actually a greek tragedy and this is plays greek tragedy and confidential clerk or elder statesman and where you can see this these are all modern social comedies and the plays which were written right guys we'll talk about subscribe to our youtube channel for more videos on next video is going to be ts eliot the wasteland where i'll give you i'll talk about the wasteland in two videos one short uh, shortcut techniques with regard to the wasteland next i'll talk about short background and summary okay subscribe to our youtube channel share our information to your friends and colleagues and see you